Many years ago, this me came across this board game, wonderful game for the family called Game of Life. And it's just another game, something to keep us happy and interested in the world. And the whole game encompassed the routine of all that's available for this life within this game. It didn't mention anything about space travel or aliens or angels or anything imaginative that did not exist. It was a pure game of the system of games. How we live our life. This is a replica of what the system expects us to live our life as. <laughs> and it was just a game. As life goes on, negativity from this mind arises through, uh, or through being engulfed with sameness, same routine, same types of work, same education system. Same procedures at weddings and funerals. The past is never let go. It always seems to remain as the, the, the center of what is taking place. It's like change from a human intelligent way will not be accepted. Like this is the way it will be for you. And this is the way it will be for your family. You will experience war. You will experience all these things. Now, we can say it could be a, uh, <clears throat> a game of life from God. To say, well, I'm going to send every single soul, spirit, whatever we are, down to play the same game and see what the outcome is. See what, how they deal with it, how they handle it. Or it could be a system that really is old, stale and lost and confused and just so lazy that it says, well, can't be bothered now. Just keep going, the same thing, same routine. But the negativity arises because the game doesn't change. Not to pacify or to, for the purpose of my life, I want the game to change because I want to experience something new. <laughs> it's something within us all that grows accustomed to change and we as whatever we are on our what appears to be repetitive reoccurrence of being here in the body we must wake up and say Phew. I have been here before and there's nothing new. There's nothing new. Oh yes, there's newness and how we dress and fashion and, and um, uh, 
evolved languages and you know diversity and behaviors and we have negative and positive problems and non problems and we plod on and we chop the trees down and build the houses very simple and basic stuff so that we can survive on this planet but many are experiencing this stale educational system stale system of politics vote red or white or blue or green or whatever the colors are republican democrats conservative labor this or that that's your choices give them two choices that's all they need do i have sex or do not i have sex do we have children or don't we have children that opposing states of manic destruction so many are awakening because many are destroyed depressed disillusioned because many are awakening to their true original state their original self not in a spiritual christian or hindu or catholic way just what the hell is going on we seem to dress better but we don't think any better we seem to build buildings higher but we still haven't found a, a reason for doing it a purpose we continue to remain in this Ten Commandment system thou shalt not and thou shalt but we find ourselves leaving the relationship quicker getting out not fulfilling the roles of the commandments and all that stuff because they're old and stale and then this game of life really has came to an end because the only way we can change ourselves is to create a pandemic or create something that is an excuse to ignore and get the whole public's attention you know imagine asking the public or the people no you can't put your children to school we've made a decision no no you can't say that we're paying this there's a pandemic oh okay you'll die it's not a conspiracy it's that the game of life is now at an end because the game of life is fake the game of life is ego mind the game of life is fun humor just a joke just something to pacify our self through our short-term life in this body and consciousness <laughs> has reached most of us and says and is speaking give up give up this idea that you can maintain and control each other you may be able to do that for a period of time you may be able to think your way out of past by believing and hoping in future and you may be able to avoid believing and hoping in future by relying on past but until you deal with the present moment nothing will change and that's why we're all dealing with this present moment now 
what's taking place now. Some are still thinking about the future and what kind of vaccines and how long we're going to have to take it and all that blah, 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 blah. But it's just a game. The game of life has transcended into another version. So it's not good news. It's good news to the mind. It's good news to the ego. It's good news to that leeching, seeking, alien mind that loves itself, loves its intelligence, loves to speak about those who have passed on and how great they were. But there were only a few. The rest of us were just actors in the game of life, props in the game of life. And Christ will come again and there'll be another one. So the future is also about someone special. And you're not special, you see. That's what they're saying. You're not special. You're simply a pawn in this game. But the good news is, it's just a game. In your body state, it matters not what's going on. You can participate with the game. You can go and protest. You can go and become uh, someone who believes strongly in a vaccine. You can go and someone who is, you can play the role of someone who is terrified of this virus, that it may harm you. You can go and ignore things and get on with your job. And you can go and um, start a new family and try and plan and get yourself a new business, get your way out of the situation. But you're participating. The one that is not affected by a pandemic or a virus or any fear of death or fear of living is that those who really know that it's just a game and they don't have to participate. But when they do participate, they're not fully engaged with what they're participating with. They're pretending. They're using their mind to say, look, I'm one of yours. Are you happy? Yeah. But you know what? I don't mind. I don't mind. You're either on one side or the other. You're on the side that this is reality and that we must participate and that we must eradicate this virus or we must change the education system or we must value our time on this earth or we must be supportive to politicians and scientists. Or you can be the other one and say, it's all a conspiracy. I'm going to fight against all these things. I'm going to fight against the panda. I don't believe it exists. I don't, blah, blah, blah. You know, the opposite side. Or you can be the one in the middle. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> Who the hell really cares about what? But you cannot take that middle stance. You can't take that Buddha nature without experiencing without overcoming fear without overcoming the knowledge and the idea that you're not that you are something more as well as a body a mind a living soul spirit even beyond consciousness you exist so whatever happens in this game whether it's a real game, like this half says, or whether it's a conspiracy, it's all a plan. It's all about aliens and stuff like that, that this side care about. The one that really doesn't engage with whether the virus exists or not, or whether the education system is good or bad, and simply ignores, like the mastery of the sages, 
They choose to ignore that what is taking place. And in this ignorance, there's only one that they can really create a true debate with. And that's their inner being. That's the Sadguru. That's the soul, the spirit, the consciousness, the God, the Christ, the Buddha, the Shiva that we are, that lies within this projected game of <laughs> wonderful states of mind. Anger, logic, happiness, pain, pleasure, conspiracies, reality, experience, non-experience, birth, death, hate, love, war, peace. These are all ideas and concepts. These are all thoughts. These are all based on a way out of fear. How to get out of being frightened that I die is to create all these other ideas that there's something else there. Something else in this world, in this universe that will save me before I die. And if they don't save me before I die, when I die, they'll save me then. There's no one to save and there's no one not to save because you are infinite life. You cannot be born or die. Your thoughts can be born. Your thoughts can give birth to themselves. The one that thinks these thoughts, that pure, genuine one that shines and reflects and glows and that we see it within each other but we cannot see it within ourselves. That one is exempt. That one creates the idea of birth and death. That one creates mind. That one creates bodies. That one creates this game for its own satisfaction, its own humor. That one is you. So when you play the board game, Game of Life, remember you are the one that stands around the board. You're not on the board. You're not participating as something within the game. You're participating as a witness of a game that appears to be real when the board is put away and we go into this world. But all we've done is we've jumped into the game just for a laugh, just to experience the states of pain, pleasure, sex, happiness, joy, walking, swimming, action, war, peace. And the only thing that's wrong is that we believe that we are genuinely the only prop in the game and that we're not witnessing ourselves as something other than what we are pretending to play or participate in a game that doesn't exist. It's mere. We're all imagining that this is real. The one that imagines that it's real is real. The imagination is simply a game. Namaste. Mm -hmm.